Hello there. Once again, it's Anton from Anton Bay. Uh, thank you for stopping by the collection room on this beautiful afternoon. And uh, today I'm looking at some Femforce up close comics. Now I look at, uh, I've been working my way through the regular Femforce series, uh, issues one through a hundred, solid run, page by page, going through it all. But uh, there was a side series called Femforce up close. And I think it featured a lot more, uh, solo stories of different characters and things like that and uh this is a second video i've done on these i've done one through four uh today we're looking at five through eight uh just kind of to get an idea what these are and i am pretty sure i'm I actually i'm positive this is a brad brad gorby cover um so is that one so is that one uh not positive on that one that might be a hikey cover so uh, C. Bradford Gorby is uh, one of the one of the artists that features on a lot of the covers. Uh, easily my first uh, issues of, of Femme Force I ever found. He was doing the covers, um, and you'll also see a lot of art by uh, oh probably Bill Black is excellent. Uh, but all of the art all the way around on these is pretty good. Some better than others, and some I like more than others. But these look to be uh, most of these are Gorby covers. And you'll you'll notice that's a name that comes up quite often. That Bill Black, Heike, these are names that uh, these guys worked on these a lot. Uh, this is 1992, as per reference, and got a big, beautiful open cover page. A uh, story by Stephen Myers, pencils by Richard Pollard. Um, Pollard is another one who does quite a few, and Pollard's work is actually pretty nice. Like I like it a lot, and these are some beautiful pages. And the one thing, if you're if you're not used to Fem Force comics, is they they tend to veer towards a somewhat timeless uh, period. Well, I guess it's not a timeless period. It's more of a like a period in the forties, forties and fifty, where uh, not just with their vehicles, but with their outfits, their hair designs, a lot of it. It just kind of has. It just it sticks to what it what it started as. Uh, and a lot of these characters are are from that time period, but the the actual Femforce comics they weren't being produced until uh, I believe 1985 when they started publishing, and they are still being published today, by the way. But these are beautifully done. These are some tremendously nice pages. But yeah, you can tell it has a it just has a an aged quality to it, or a a dated quality to it, even though this is a 2002 comic, we're still, we're still drawing stories and drawing ladies and drawing their hair and drawing suits and stuff like it's 1940s. I, I just love it. I think it's a great look. They, they never backed down away from the, uh, uh, cheesecake era of the forties and they just, they stuck with it. And a lot of, a lot of companies wouldn't do that and they would tone everything down for the modern audience because, you know, this is how it used to look in comics. And these guys just, no, we're going to keep it looking the same. And I respect that. So we've got Night Vale, or I guess in this case, uh, this would be the Blue Bulleteer. Um, also known as the Night Vale. Actually has a duplicate roles there in the team. How could I be so stupid? Oh, Close Encounters of the Postal Kind. You get a complete story. And like I said, these are solo, more like solo stories. Because the, the Femforce team, I mean, it's Miss Victory, Night Vale, Sin, She-Cat, Stardust. So the Blue Bulleteer is actually uh, Night Vale. Just a different incarnation of her. This would be more of the, her 40s appearance. And then in the 80s, she became like a sorceress as the Night Vale, if I remember correctly. Um, so normal pages are, are called Fem Letters. This is Up Close Counters of the Postal Kind. I kind of like that name. For a letters page. And let's see. Jose Dominiquez. 
does the blue bulleteer. Um, whose is this one? Laura Wright. Was a healthy young So this is Gorby and Heike. You can usually spot Gorby's work because he makes waists just a little smaller than, than they I think they should be. But he makes up for it by drawing very expressive faces usually. <clears throat> so to be appreciated. Back issues that you could order, profile card, trading cards. Uh, difficult to get your hands on the trading cards. I have one set, but I think there's three total sets. Uh, I have like the newest set, but I, I don't have the older ones. They're just, they're so impossible to get your hands on. <clears throat> so we've got FemForce up close, number six. That is an awesome Miss Victory back uh, picture there. That's amazing. And it looks like this is going to be a Miss Victory story. Once again, this is uh, this is 93, so the last one was 92. This must be in January. Stories by Stephen Myers, script by Bill Black. Bill Black will almost always be in the credits. Um, pencils and lettering by Dick Ayers. Inks by Nar Castro. <clears throat> And I should also mention, uh, if you're new to this comic or new to AC Comics, this is in their colored era. And they did have uh, 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 an era that was mostly black and white. And they've experimented with various different sizes of the comic. Primarily because uh, in, in everything that they had to do to keep the comic book going, some, some months they couldn't do this, some months they couldn't do that. And so they did what they could afford. And some months it was black and white. That was what they had. Some some years it was color. Some years it was black and white. Some years they are thinner, taller. Some some years, shoot, there was a good phase where they were like four books thick. They were massive comic books that were running like nine ninety five a, a month or an issue. But it was such a huge issue that like it was totally worth it. Um, so yeah, they they've gone through a lot of changes. Anything they can do to stay. Uh, Stay afloat, stay working, stay putting out the books. I always appreciated that. So, wow, She Cat is looking messed up. Covered in blood. And, okay, so I'm not seeing it as much in the word bubbles. But I'm seeing it a lot in these bubbles. They use a weird typed font. And sometimes it's in all the speech dialogue bubbles. And it's just it's just awkward. I'm not a big fan of it. I would much rather have um, just a regular regular font as opposed to the computer uh, square font. I'm not a big fan. But as I was saying with the colored era, I did I do ugh, I love black and white comics. But, oh, do I love Femforce in color. It is so, so good in color. Love it. Just a mess of panels, which makes me think Gorby stuff. Um, he was, uh, one thing I've noticed he does often is we don't have actual panels and all the panels are jumbled together. And the story just kind of slides down on the page on you. Instead of being all segregated, it just pops out. Something I like. See, like there. It's another good uh, good example of it. There's a more fluid movement to the fight and to the movement when there's no panel to separate it. It's just, it's just bop right there. Looks like he's going to shoot a werewolf. Miss Victory. Is that the same pose? Close, but not exactly the same. <clears throat> AC Universe Miss Victory. Back issues that are, I wish they could be had for a good price these days, but man, these books are getting pricey. Uh, there's just nothing like them. There's nothing like them out on the, out on the market, hardly. So uh, the more, more people find out about them, the more expensive they get, and that is how it is. <clears throat> 
The Capricorn Chronicles, uh, Bill Black, C. Bradford Gorby, Mark Heike, coming in 1994. Big opening page on the threshold of a dream, Miss Victory answering the phone. It's a pretty basic page, but uh, beautiful nonetheless. Uh, who is working on this? Uh, pencils, Tom Simonton. Hmm. Script, Mark Heike. Colors, Rebecca Black. So if this is Simonton, okay. Yeah, it looks a little odd, a little, little different. I don't know that he's my favorite artist, but he's pretty good. I don't know if I have a favorite one. And I would like to point out that, I mean, even the ones that maybe aren't the best, um, I still greatly applaud the work they did with the book. Um, I have I have heard that this company was unable to pay what a lot of other companies did. So a lot of young artists or new artists would uh, kind of break into the scene by working on some of these books for AC and and I think the work that they did was fantastic. And, it's, and I, I, I always say stuff like, you know, not a lot of the modern comic book artists, I don't think could draw this. Like, like I just, I couldn't see Barry Windsor Smith drawing this stuff. It would just, it would be ridiculous. It would look like garbage. Kind of like oh, his work always does. But, you know, you can't draw, if you can't draw a full figured woman, and some the ability to punch the face really hard, then you're, you're probably not cut out for working on Thin Force books. You gotta draw. You gotta draw severe face punching most of the time. Irish Macalla, AC Comics pens. The second this Miss Victory, because there was two. Rio Rita, Night Vale art print. Up close, number eight, and that's the next book up. Those can wait for us right there as we open up number eight. Fem Force number eight. Up, Fem Force up close, number eight. And it looks like we're gonna get another Miss Victory story. And I'm already, I'm already seeing we got uh, Garganta. <clears throat> Sorry, Gar I, I almost said Giganta. I sometimes slip. Garganta and Giganta are both uh, women who grow gigantic. And I it, sometimes I get confused and the names slip out wrong. And I always have to catch myself either direction, whether it's Garganta. So Tara is the the giant girl on the Femforce team that grows large. And Garganta is the one on the generally more wild villainous side. Not that she's generally deliberately a villain, but uh, her size causes her to lose her mind. And so she becomes dangerous and hostile when she gets big. Tara's usually got to put her down, but it's crazy. It's crazy how many giant women you encounter. And like I said, face punching. You're gonna have lots of face punching. Poor Garganta. So usually the blonde is the hero, but in these stories it was always uh, the giant blonde is the villain and the giant brunette is your hero. And that is a crazy uh, outfit thing she's wearing. The weird Z pattern shaped. Oh, we've got dead animals going on now. What's going on here? You. I don't like it when things get too biological. That's just nasty. We got the black shroud appearing. Which is probably never good. We got nasty things with tentacles. Um, that's never a good sign. Thank God this isn't made in Japan. Still, it's, it, it could be bad. Not ideal. Definitely not ideal. But they win and they manage to keep everything uh relatively pg so there we go uh there's tara in the ac universe 
height 5'10", but it varies. Uh, weight 130, but it varies because, of course, she can become enormous. And then that's the only character profile we're going to get. AC Comic Update, probably about the movie that never happened. Uh, Corgana's Ghoul Gallery. Oh, that looks awesome. I have not seen that. Anyway, that is that is four more issues of FemForce up close for you. Um, I love AC Comics. I love the the universe that it gives us. Um, how unapologetically uh, being what it is. Anyway, that's my story. Thanks you guys for watching. I will catch you later. Bye.